So good day, everyone. Today, we'll continue our discussion on obligations of partners um, with third person. So um, let's start with Article 1818, which is a very long provision. But before that, I'd like you to take note of the terms such as yung usual way of doing business by a partnership and sa atin pong accounting yung ordin ordinary course of business. Diba? Yun yung mga relative acts, kung ano yung nature ng business, yun po yung kanyang mga acts na permit perform. So, that is the usual way of business. So, as an example, eh, kapag ikaw ay real estate um, business, so, ang usual way mo ay ikaw ay you're selling real property that is lands or buildings. Diba? So, kapag ikaw into trading, usually that's the buy and selling of merchandise. So, in usual way, lagi ay yung selling and trading. Another that is, I would like you to take note as well, ano yung mga acts ba na hindi usual way? So, the unrelated acts of the um, partnership, which is not in the nature of a day-to-day -day transaction of the partnership, yun yung po yung ating not usual way. So, let's say, for example, if you are into a real estate, usual way is selling land and buildings. Then, your not usual way is selling po ng vehicles of the partnership. So, yun po, ano po. And then, aside from that, I would like you as well to take note, what are those acts of ownership? So, it's like saying that you are uh, doing certain actions like conveying property or certain rights. It's as if you are the sole owner of the property. So, in our case, that would be, it's like exercising um just selling in your own name those properties of the partnership. So, yun po yung ating example. And um, take note as well of those acts <clears throat> which are in contravention or contrary to any stipulation or agreement that you have under the partnership contract. So, let's start. <clears throat> under 1818, it says that every partner is an agent of the partnership for the purposes of its business. So, take note that by this provision, it is the nature of the contract of partnership that it is fiduciary nga and then trust and confidence govern the uh, partnership relation. So, every partner is an agent, mutual agency, of the other partners in the partnership. So, yun po yung established natin um, under this provision. So, here including the execution in the partnership name of any instrument, so by, by virtue of the mutual agency, and then for apparently carrying on in the usual way of business of the partnership of which he is a member binds the partnership. So any act of any of the partner in the usual way would act of, would act, would bind the partnership unless the partner so acting has in fact no authority to act for the partnership in that particular matter and the person with whom he is dealing has knowledge of the fact that he has no such <clears throat> liability. So under 1818, to conclude is acts apparently under 1818 acts apparently on in carrying on in the usual way of the business of the partnership binds the partnership tama ba so unless lang unless the partner is so acting has in fact no authority to act for the partnership and then that person whom with whom that partner he is dealing has the knowledge of the fact that he has no such authority. So, take note of that. That's under paragraph 1. So, basically here, um, no, no authority si partner kasi hindi po siya. Although siya ay usual way pero no authority sa partner si partner. And then the third party knows that the partner has no authority. Then it will not bind the partnership. So this is to penalize customers or clients who are in bad faith. So despite their knowledge, it's still um, they, they, they transacted with that uh, partner who has in fact, no authority. So, the stipulation in the Articles of Partnership that any, may mga pagkakataon, di ba, that any of the two part, managing partners may contract and sign in the name of the partnership 
with the consent of the other kung naalala ninyo because you could appoint at least sometimes one or two as managing partners so pwedeng magkaroon tayo ng stipulation na the agreement should be with the consent of all the managing partners so if that would be the case it creates an obligation between the two partners that they have to um asks the consent of the other before contracting for the partnership so kung any undertaking man na they have to ask the consent. So, but this obligation, ha, of course, is not upon the third person who contracts with the partnership. Ito yung mention ko na din before. Neither it is, again, necessary for that third person to ascertain if that managing partner whom he contracts with has previously obtained the consent of the other partner. So, a third person may and has the right to presume that a partner with whom he contracts has, in the ordinary and natural course of business, is consented by the other partner or his co-managing partners. For otherwise, he would not enter into a contract. So, yun po, ano po. And then, let's go for paragraph 2 under 1818. It says that, an act of a partner which is not apparently for carrying on business of the partnership in the usual way does not bind the partnership unless authorized by the other partner. So here in paragraph 2, again, not for the act is not for apparently carrying on in the usual way of the partnership Um business and the partner has no authority. So basically, it would not bind the partnership. So here, whether or not the third person knows the lack of authority is not important. No, because the act is apparently not for the usual way of business. Ito kasi parang ano na, outside authority nga po. Ano po? As long as there was really no authority, the firm is not bound. So the partnership is not bound. Would no long, as a consequence, would not have liability for whatever act of that partner who is not apparently for carrying on the ordinary course of the business. So as an example, if we have... On paragraph 2, an example, A, B, C, and D are partners in A, B, C partnership. Engage in, let's say, selling furnitures. So, without authority from the partners, adding one of the partners, C, sold a track of the partnership to X. So, in that case, the sale would not be valid and binding to the partnership, di ba? Kasi ang business po natin ay um, furniture. So, what if C naman? was authorized to sell by all of the other partners. Would the sale be binding? Would the sale be binding? What if C authorized to sell by all of the partners? That track as mentioned. Yes, kasi po, kapag po ay may unanimous na decision coming from all the partners, it would really basically bind the partnership. So, yun lang po. E di if in case that um, one of the partners I I have sold and then it is being authorized by all of the partners, then the sale would be binding to the partnership. And here, it should be emphasized that the authority, since it is not the usual way, um, should be reformed or uh, the, the authority should be um, coming from the unanimous decision or all of the partners' consent. So, let's now go for third paragraph. Except when authorized by the other partners or unless they have abandoned business, one or more but less than all of the partners have no authority. So, take note here, there are seven acts here. Basically, these seven acts are acts which are not in the usual way and not allowed or unauthorized acts by one or kahit more than one or less than all. So these acts could not be performed by one or more or less than all by the partners. These are unauthorized acts. And what are these? 
And basically, this will not bind the partnership. First one, assign the partnership property and trusts for the creditors or assign his promise to pay. So, assignment of debt, basically. You know, assign the partnership property, assignment of property for the debts. And then dispose of the goodwill of the business. So you know for a fact that the goodwill or basically may associate natin sa ating reputation as a company. It has a value already. It's an intangible asset. You cannot dispose that. And goodwill, um, take note, you could have it um, patented with the intellectual property um, code. So may value na siya. And do any other act which would make it impossible to carry on the ordinary part business of the partnership. So it would hinder basically the natural course or ordinary course of business, such as being nature not and a trading. And then you sell the track. So basically, um, it hinders the ordinary course of having the delivery of your trade or merchandise. So confess a judgment. So basically, ito yung parang you have. You as a partner, you acknowledge a debt, although it has should have to undergo with a proceeding or a formal complaint. But it's like you voluntarily submitted that the partnership is indebted to a person. As an example lang. So enter into a compromise concerning a partnership claim or liability. So a partnership has a claim on a certain property, o ikaw yung nakipag-areglo, o siya, okay na yan, ang aming part ay ganito lang, ganyan, um, sumang-ayon ka. Well, it doesn't bind the partnership because under the, um, under 1818 18 or 1818, it's one of those acts which are not authorized. And then, submit a partnership claim or liability to arbitration. So, submitting a liability for arbitration and then renouncing a claim of the partnership. So, waiver of claim. So, hindi ka lang kakabol. Hindi po pwede yun. What are the reasons why this seven acts? So, again, those seven acts enumerated under 8 and 18 are instances of which are not for apparently, as what I've mentioned, usual way of carrying business by the partnership. So, those seven instances, the authority must be unanimous. Ibig sabihin, all of the partners. It should not be one or more or less than all, except if the business has been abandoned. So, ito yung yung natatangi exception, except if the business. So, then that those acts could be done by one or more or less than all. So, what are the reasons why those seven acts of ownership are unusual? Why? Assigning the partnership property is basically would cause the dissolution of the partnership and then disposing the goodwill which is a valuable asset of the partnership is um, still an act of ownership and then doing any other act which would be make impossible well it is prejudicial to the interest of the partnership as what well as again yun nga po hindi tayo kikita hindi po tayo magkakontinue ng ating business so that would be prejudicial to the partnership Confession of judgment. So here, it's still an act of ownership. If done before a case is filed, this is null and void. Yung confession and judgment, kasi kailangan po talaga da. All of the partners should agree to that. If done later, then the firm would be jeopardized. And here in compromise, this is an act of ownership. So no one or more or less than all may said to be equivalent because this is said to be equivalent to transferring right of a uh, partnership right. Know. So this is not justified. And arbitration, um, still an act of ownerships. It's not justified. So renouncing a claim or waiver. Why should a partner renounce a claim that does not belong to him na naman, but to the partnership? So still, it is not valid. And the last one is, yun pong last paragraph natin, yung act is not binding to the partnership as to having um, knowledge of the restrictions. Ano, kapag may knowledge po sa restrictions, 
ay hindi po talaga binding. So, no act of a partner in contravention of a restriction on authority shall bind the partnership to persons having knowledge of the restriction. But faith to, di ba? So, hindi po pwede yun. Alam mo, may stipulation na ipinagbabawal yun still you transact with um, the partner um, doing that certain act. So, it's not valid. Um, let's continue. So, another long provision is Article 1819. In paragraph 1 of 1819, um, here, under 1819, 